Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, I've got a bunch of emulation news for you. We're talking about the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo GameCube and Wii, PlayStation 2, PlayStation Vita, and PlayStation Home. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about PlayStation Home. For those that are unaware, PlayStation Home was a very interesting free 3D social game that was available on the PlayStation 3 via PlayStation Network. It officially shut down back in 2015, and there has been a team that has been really focused on reviving it. The team is called Destination Home, and I'll leave a link to their site in the description below. Feel free to check them out. This team has been working for some time to resurrect PlayStation Home, and they kind of have here in a really big way. Here is a video of PlayStation Home Online version 1.86 retail running on an official PS3 using 4.88 firmware. This is currently just a proof of concept, but at the same time here, this is huge. I'll leave a link to this video in the description below. Check it out. Also check out Nagato Revenge's channel. And to go even further here, I would say the icing on the cake is that any purchases you made in game prior to PlayStation Home's closure on April 1st, 2015 will once again be accessible to you if you're using your original account. So if you used to play PlayStation Home quite a bit and you made some purchases, well, you might be able to play this game again. Next up here, we're talking about PlayStation 2 emulation, but not necessarily on Android with Aether SX2. Aether SX2 is currently being worked on for ARM desktops and single board computers. It hasn't officially released for these platforms yet but it looks like it's on its way. And for those of you who have dreamed of cooking your Raspberry Pi, well, you might be able to with Aether SX2 in the near future. I don't really expect Aether SX2 to run well at all on the Pi. The Pi is significantly underpowered. We might be surprised, but if you've got a Pi, I wouldn't get your hopes up. You might need something a little bit more powerful. Next up, we're talking about Nintendo GameCube and Wii emulation on Android with Dolphin, just not the Dolphin that's available on the Google Play Store. We're talking about Dolphin MMJR. Dolphin MMJR is a fork of Dolphin. It's 100% free available on GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description below. And this version here is geared towards performance as opposed to emulation accuracy. So if your phone is struggling to run GameCube and Wii games via the normal Dolphin, you can always check out Dolphin MMJR and hopefully that helps out. The MMJ in Dolphin MMJR stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano, and the R stands for Revamp. Anyways, Dolphin MMJR did get a massive update today, and it's all thanks to Gamer64 who just recently shut down Citra Enhanced. So it's nice to see them still working with the community here. Uh, these updates, there's a lot of them, and they include two features that were, well, they state probably the most requested features that they have had since MMJR became available. They added in RVZ and WIA support, plus the ISO converter from the Dolphin Master. Now all your games which are .RVZ will be supported and show up on the games list. They've added in storage access framework, file picker to finally support SD cards on Android 11 and 12 devices and that kind of helps the scoped storage issue. On top of that, memory RAM override option has been added. They also managed to squeeze in some JIT updates and optimizations, which should hopefully help out game performance a little bit. And they've also added in a neat feature here of the FPS turning red when the game speed is below 85%. And they are not done. They have a bunch of stuff planned for the near future as well. Next up here, we're talking about PlayStation Vita emulation on Mac, Linux, and Windows with Vita 3K. Vita 3K keeps getting better and better, and it just recently got some updates. Someone has Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 up and running. It might not be perfect, but this is pretty huge. And if we take a quick peek here at the official Vita 3K compatibility list, we're sitting at 63 games listed as playable. I'll leave a link to this list in the description below. Feel free to check it out. And last up here, we're talking about everyone's favorite Nintendo Switch emulator on Android, Skyline. We've talked about Skyline yesterday with a bunch of big updates. Well, we've got another one today. Untouchable here has shown even more 3D games are up and running. This is The Legend of K. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a great game. Some people like it. Uh, but at the same time here, the fact that this is running and rendering 
fairly decently is a big step forward. Corridor Z is up and running at 60 frames a second. And a 2D game here, Carry On, is running at 60 frames a second. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, haul stuff and no fluff. I am a huge fan of all of the improvements I've been seeing recently and I hope they continue. 2022 has been shaping up to be a pretty big year for emulation. Let me know your thoughts about anything we talked about today in the comments below and we talked about quite a bit. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.